Hamish and Andy. And uh, as the preparations for Caravan of Courage for the UK and Ireland heat up. Yep. For people who've just tuned in tune for the first time ever, maybe. Welcome. Welcome. And we're out of here. <laughs> Soon. In two weeks. Yes, we're going to take a caravan and broadcast back to you on the people's holiday from wherever we stop throughout Ireland and Great Britain. Yeah. We don't know what we'll get up to. We know what we won't be doing. We won't be playing golf, Andy. The jury's out on that one. The jury has just come back, had a oh. whisper to me, and good news, we're not playing golf. <laughs> okay. For all those yeah. who are keen to dodge. Hung jury. Andy's. <laughs> so, well, but you can feel free that you can hang them. You can hang them now <laughs> because they've served their purpose. We won't be doing golf. We'll be doing lots of exciting things. Um, well, I don't know what we'll be doing, hmm. but I can guarantee it'll be more exciting than golf. Here's something that really would tick that excitement box, Ando. Yep. An email has come in. Mm-hmm. Are you aware that we'll be in the UK mm-hmm. and in Ireland, I believe, at the same time as the biggest English show in the world will be? Top, and top we gear. Not top gear. top gear, my friend. Thinking too small. Think very big. The, and bill? the bill? Oh, no. Uh, X Factor? No. Think big, 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 big. Like, think I think massive. it gets better than it, bigger than X Factor. I think it's the most watched show on the. Maybe we'll step back it. a bit because it might be too massive that you can't even get it all in. What do you mean? Like, top Gear. Antics, Antics Roger. Oh. In fact. My folly, sir. This is from alert listener Alicia. She is a fan of Antiques Roadshow. As am I. I love Deidre and Tony and whoever the old guy is that's looking at a piece of rubbish and giving it a $5,000. Yeah. Here's, here's a little tiny porcelain clown with a chip nose. A million dollars. As much as the next guy. You and I love yeah. nothing more mm. than to scream at the television. Yeah. You've got it all wrong. You've got it all wrong. Mm. Yelling at the old people, don't get excited. There's no way that chest of drawers is worth that much. <laughs> yeah. It's rubbish. Mm. Have you not been to Freedom? Mm. You can get one a lot cheaper that's <laughs> Does a better job. And uh, we cross paths with Antique Roadshow. Really? You don't, while we're over there. Do they, have, do, they, do they have mapped out where the Antique Roadshow are going? That's what Alicia said. She said, look, you're going to be in the same area. Yep. They're doing a similar route. We'll have to drop by. We would have to drop oh, by. Every day. Yeah. Well, no. Yep. <laughs> I don't think Two every day. Two weeks <laughs> of live antique valuation. It's not enough, but it's a start. So do, they, just, do we know where they're going to be? Because we're starting an island. Do you know where we might catch them? Well, if we do the loose loop that we were looking at. We, as we worked out from people walking into a bar, an Irish. A Scotsman, a Scotsman, an Englishman, a Welshman, in that order. So that's why we're going around the countries in that order. I don't know exactly, Alicia doesn't say exactly what their route is, but she says, based on the rough plan of where you guys are going, yeah. she says, and I quote, you do intercept their path. I'll get onto her and find out more info. Yep. As the navigator, yep. I would like to appoint myself Minister for Hunting Antiques Roadshow. I reckon the whole, the whole show could be dedicated, the whole trip could be dedicated to an old fashioned antiques roadshow hunt. Yeah. It ch- feels yeah. good just to get out in the road exactly. and just chase down some old people like that evaluating f- chairs. Like that film Twister. I'm Helen Hunt mm-hmm. in the car and we're just chasing old people. Yep. I, suppose. <laughs> I don't think we'll ever yell they're moving too fast back to the vehicle. <laughs> Here's the thing, Ando. Obviously, if we catch them, what, what will we get valued? Good call. Maybe I we mean, can find something on the way. Or maybe there's something in our lives already that we would like to get valued, had a bit of a brainwave. Okay. You know that rubbish wooden snake that's at your parents' house? The so-called World War I relic it or is, whatever. Mate. It is. It's not and from World War I, mate. It well, didn't get any enemy scalps. I don't think it even fought. It's around that time, and it is precious, yes. And if you think that the... the you keep talking about how valuable it is and how it might it be one un- of a kind. It's under no circumstances are we taking the snake. Take the snake. The snake. <laughs> Take the snake. the snake. Take the snake. Don't clap, Cackling Jack. We're not taking the snake. We're taking the snake. We won't be allowed to take the snake. Who says? My mum, my family, <laughs> it's their prized possession. Oh, this is the same mum that got on and forbade me from driving. Yes. And now I'm not allowed to take her bloody snake. Well, it's What else would Margley not like to happen on this trip? I don't Sorry, know. mate, but I thought it was... Burn our it was, family photos? I thought it was you and me, <laughs> not you and me with your mum's permission. The problem is, this. her gr- gr- grandma handed it to her mum. She's not going to miss it. I bet she doesn't even play with She's it every not day. She's not anymore, around anymore. Oh, sorry, I think you're talking about her grandma. I'm not talking about her <laughs> Ancestors from the twenties. <laughs> yeah, she's going to miss it because it sits there and and the put your pr- money where your mouth is. How much do you reckon that thing's worth? It'd be worth twenty grand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if it that would... thing is worth over five grand, yeah. I'll eat part of your thong. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be worth 20, 20 g. Twenty grand. Yep. You are ridiculous, mate. Mm. 
A, a no, real we're not, snake. We're not going to find out. A real because, snake's not worth 20 grand. Yeah, Nothing's not, worth, barely anything's worth 20 grand. We're not going to find out because we're not taking a snake. I don't trust A lot of emails coming snake. in already. No, Take the snake. You haven't, seen, you haven't seen anything. Hey, you, you are fighting a battle you cannot win, I promise you that. My favourite kind of battle, Ando. People, ever since I mentioned the idea on the show yesterday that our caravan of courage around Britain and Ireland in a few weeks will cross paths with Antiques Roadshow. I can't wait. The smash hit TV show. Not mm. sure what channel it's on over here, but mm. smash hit nonetheless. Mm. Can we catch up with Antiques Roadshow? I feel that we can. Yeah, I'd love to as well. What are we going to take? Do we take that rubbish, antique, wooden toy snake that you and your parents are always banging on about that your girlfriend and I have got in trouble for touching? Don't touch the, don't it's touch the antiques su- snake. Because it's supposedly worth, you know, tens of thousands because according to you guys, why well, you guys carry on about it, it single-handedly won the First World War. <laughs> Mate, and it's so it's valuable. It's 100 years old. It's not 100. It's, it's not, 90 at best. We're not... You're not taking the snake. And no I matter want how many, to take the snake. People, no matter how many emails I've got rubbishing me. Every, it, we've got literally hundreds of emails overnight just chanting, take the snake. It's the equivalent. The it's, snake. it's our family equivalent of the French going, have the Mona Lisa and take it round in the back, in a cupboard in your caravan yep. and get it valued along the way. I would do that. I'd look after it. <laughs> you won't. You've got to trust me, Andy. You won't. The thing is, this thing's not as valuable as you think it is. It can't be. Yesterday, your dad sent a text message, not just to me, yeah. but to you, to Sammy, our producer. Yeah, and you the want whole to call him now. I'm the same. Saying there's no-, there's no... He just said flat out... You can forget about taking the snake. You, the country wants the snake valued. You can rate it, the snake. You want to call him now. All I'm saying is it'll be a boring conversation because the, he'll I give you the exact same answer he gave you in the text message, the exact same answer I'm I'm not you. giving up because we're taking the snake. Let's give him a okay, buzz. Okay, we can go on. This is going to be... It, I know how this is going to go, everybody. All right, let me do the talking, mate. Adults are talking. Hello. Hey, Dad. Same as Shandy here. How are you? We're good, Mick. Um, you probably. I'm just turning your car. Uh, you're probably. I'm just hopping into a car. That's all right. Hopping in. Good. Yeah, well, you'll listen to the show in a second then, but uh, Hamish has got something to ask you. I probably know what the answer's going to be. You probably know what this is about, Mick. Yeah, there's no way you're going to get the snake. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it, mate. You're dreaming, <laughs> Lee. You can't it's watch that snake 24 <laughs> hours a day, Mick. You can't. You can't. Where's it? Marg's got a special little thing. She's tied it down, so there's no way no you're going to get anywhere near it. So the snake's under arrest. I told yeah, you. Yeah, it hey. is under arrest. So the snake is I'll in be... protective custody. It is. We've put it in a cage, and um, you know we've tied the cage down to the floor, etc. So there's no way you're going to get to it. It's a lot of tying down, isn't it's like it? The <laughs> it's like the Louvre at my parents' house at the moment. Yeah. Even worse. I, 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 as far as I know, they haven't tied down the Mona Lisa to the floor. <laughs> well, well Mick, that's, Mick. That's, that's, I probably had to do that over there to make sure that you wouldn't take it too. I am an agent of the people here, Mick. The people <laughs> are demanding that that snake be evaluated and valued by the Antiques Roadshow people in England. Well, we can send them a photo. Yeah. They need to touch and feel they it, don't. Mick. You've seen the show. No, they need they to don't. get a vibe. I'm with you, Dad. They I'll need to get a hands-on experience of the snake. Hey, wakey, wakey, no, hands-on no, no. snakey. <laughs> no, well, no. That sort of thing doesn't happen in our house. Yeah. You know that. <laughs> All I'm saying, Dad, and I've told this to Hamish before, he's only touched it once and he nearly ruined it. Right? That's correct. So and he's not touching it again. There's exactly. no way, no. <laughs> no way. Mick, <laughs> I would let you take my antique snake overseas and value. You don't have a snake. Well, you, oh, yeah, that's because you probably don't have, have anything that's worth as much as all we have. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, of course I don't, because no one has an antique snake, because they're boring and not valuable. They are. And I think you, Lees, are just terrified that I'm going to uncover the truth no. that it's not even worth what it would be in firewood. <laughs> <laughs> Don't yeah, take that down. Yeah, no, I've talked this over with Mark. There's no way known. She said, no, don't let Hamish anywhere near it. Yeah, you're not welcome in the house. <laughs> I haven't. Yeah. There's, there's a restraining order around the house. Mark, I told, I've been trying to explain this to uh, to Hamish, Dad, and he said, let's call him, let's try, call him. Uh, Mick, I'm trying to do you a favour here, mate. As soon as you find out how valuable that snake's worth, you'll know what you're sitting on. True, but I know what I'm sitting on, and that, that's a, a very valuable heirloom. Yeah, exactly. There you go. So it's, a, it's an open Well, I know, you, I, know, I, know, I know you're sitting on an old snake. That's all I know at the moment. You've yeah, got, well, you got a wobbly old... probably very true there, too. You've got a wobbly old piece of wood. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's enough. Oh, yes. <laughs> Nothing like having Andy's dad working a bit blue on this show. <laughs> dad, I'll tell you what, I'll I... get them both valued. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you just have to ask Mark about the other one. <laughs> 
<laughs> you have to ask. I need a certificate of authenticity, <laughs> and you can't you can't use Andy as proof of its authenticity. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. We'll leave it there. Thanks okay. for taking the call. We'll catch you soon. Bye, Bye. 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 I told you, mate. Keep the willy jokes for a minimum, Mick. We're this not, is serious antiques. We're not getting you're not getting near it. I promise you that. I don't know why you keep pushing. You keep telling me this thing's a bloody antique. You it carry is. on like it's the tour and shroud. <laughs> Just put your snake. Where England is. <laughs> <laughs> this is Hamish and Andy. A caravan of courage, Great Britain and Ireland. It kicks off this evening. We are flying across. You'll be able to hear us from somewhere in Ireland on the first stop of Monday. Thanks to Dick Smith. They're the official tech partner of the Caravan of Courage, our tech experts on tour. They're getting the, the show back. We'll probably use some technology that uh, the good people at Mr Smith's have given us. Mm to track down Antiques Roadshow yep. while we're over there because we do hear that there's a chance we could intercept them. Mm. And, Andy, I want you to take your family's antique wooden snake. You're yep. always going on about how much it costs. I want them to value it so now we all know. It's just important. It's always just been important, Ham. Now, Ham, of course it's around about 10 to 20 grand, but the pro- the thing is I'm saying that it can't go. It's been passed down for three generations or four generations of my family and i I d- look, it's not mine to take. You keep pestering me. There's been plenty of persuasive emails. Today, I said I'd been working on something, and I said it was time for us to make a play for the snake. Maybe good on you. I couldn't. You've ask, done the right thing. I couldn't ask my parents whether I could take it. The answer no, would be gotta no. Gotta steal the snake. This morning, a snake heist was in the mix. <laughs> So I picked you up at around about 11, and, yeah. and uh, we drove there together. Drove to your parents' house. You were the navigator, I was the driver, even though I have had 28 experience, uh, years of experience of where my parents' house is. Still good to have a wingman. It is. Always got to have a guy waiting in the car. Uh, we were, I was nervous. We hardly spoke on the way there. No. We which hardly, is really weird. Yeah. We pulled up to Andy's house. I just kept looking over at Andy. He was not looking happy. About to go to his parents' house. And betray his parents. Pretty, sh- pretty sure. At his parents' house. Yeah. Where his parents live. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. Um, my dad was at work. I thought my mum was out to a lunch with Sins a friend. Sins of the father will be revisited upon the son. And um, so it was pretty much a break-in, snatch and grab. Um, we captured the moments just before. What's the opposite of, you know there's that saying, oh, the good son? Yeah, the bad son. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. Anyway, this is the moment before we made the play. This is it. How do you feel? You're doing the right thing, man. I feel like... I feel like I've got no choice but to do this heist. Like, you've got, you know, my sister or my girlfriend hostage somewhere. Yeah. Well, that can be arranged. But for now, let's just get in there and do what you need to do for the people, mate. Get the snake. I was going to say on the record that I don't want to get the snake and I don't want to take it. It's my family listening. There's duress. Yep. The best kind of persuasive tool you can use everyone is duress or intimidation Mm. and I've chosen duress (laughs) and a simple snatch and grab get in there you got the key to the back of the house yeah I don't think no one's home so it should be a pretty simple snatch and grab this is a standard unguarded Mm. vulnerable snake I'm going to wear gloves anyway though please do Andy you're a gentleman and a thief (laughs) good is is this the first thing you've ever stolen yeah the first, thing I, the first thing I've ever stolen from my parents. Yep. What if I get a, What if I get a, addicted to it? If I taste for it, mate, and start taking their cars? And... I've stolen several things from your parents, and it is quite fun. <laughs> I've got All a right. pair of gardening gloves. I'm going to jump in. I love. Just have to attack it. Go, Andy. Good luck stealing the snake. Shut up. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have yelled that loud. <laughs> hey, Machani, driving you home. <laughs> And you've joined us in the middle of a snake heist. Hey, Possibly the first ever snake heist to broadcast on this station. Yep. I know a few of the AM stations do them. They do them daily. There's one station that just does snake heists. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Phil and Jordan here. And welcome to Snake Snatchers. <laughs> hey, uh, today, uh, you've been asking me to steal my family's... Uh, Snake, antique snake, because you want to get it valued at Antiques Roadshow on our trip, the Caravan of Courage, Britain and Ireland. Oh, yes. Where we pick up the action. You've dri- we've driven to my parents' house. Yep. 
I'm about to go in. My mum's out uh, to lunch. My yep. dad's at work. Old fashioned, got a key to the house. Go in and get it. I'm <laughs> old fashioned, Robin from your parents because they never suspected you as the culprit. <laughs> now I'm sitting in the car, just freaking, man. I'm yeah. trying to play it cool. Cops are walking past. Yeah. I'm jittering, reading the paper, just trying to act casual. Well, I was going. Where is he? The Looking thing... at my watch, freaking out. I. The thing was, my mum was home. Everybody. My mum was home. This is this is the kind of stuff you dream of as a Hollywood scriptwriter. Yeah. <laughs> so I realised she's home. She's at the back, right next to the snake. Oh man! And I've said to uh, Jezu, who came in videoing it because we thought it was going to be an easy heist. Yeah. Said I don't know what to do. My mum's right next to the snake. The plan was to this go to the front, front of the house, ring the doorbell. Code Cobra. Code Cobra. My mum would walk to the front of the house. And I would sprint round the back. Yep. Go in, get the snake. Then yell out to her, hey, I'm here. And, she'll, and then she'll probably be inquisitive about the doorbell. That's when I hand the snake to the cameraman yep. and tell him to run. Can we call this Operation Kookaburra? No. Please. Oh, yeah. It does snake. They do snatch snakes. Because they steal snakes. Yeah, I wish one. I'd have thought of that earlier today. I just thought of it now. <laughs> okay. Here we this... go, everyone. Part two of Operation Kookaburra. Get that snake. This is the action, everybody. This is the moment I've run inside and my mum's at the front door. Hopefully you can hear the, the intenseness in my voice. Hey, Mum. Yeah, it's me. So that's you handing off the snake to Jez, who then ran away. Jez then put it at the front near the fence. I was to pick it up after that. Yeah, because I saw Jez moving around. Yeah. But then... it wasn't him that bought the snake out. I got the snake from then. <laughs> in Operation Kookaburra and met you back at the getaway vehicle. Here he is. Here he is. Has he got it? He's got something wrapped in a black T-shirt. Tell me you've got it. I've got it. Yes! God, this I'm is it. Unwrap it. Mum, mum was there. Yeah? I thought it was, took, took a while. I thought the whole thing was meant to be... I know. She's out. I know, but... <laughs> What did you do? Well, have you killed her? <laughs> what have you done? Is she I'm tied up? I might have killed her if she finds out. She might kill you. No, I I went to the front She's door. She's not, like, stuffed in a closet somewhere, is I she? No, I went to the front door, rang the doorbell, cause, and then the snake's at the back of the house, yeah. and then I could hear her walking up towards to get the door. Ran to the back of the house, got the snake, placed it outside, then went, Mum! Outdoor snake. Then went, Mum! The snake's never been outside. I'm surprised this, as soon as the sun hit it, it didn't just shrivel up. Surprised it didn't need a little wooden mouse. <laughs> I feel... Show me the snake. It's wrapped in a t-shirt, everyone. God, this is exciting. This is I like... Feel sick. This is like no. Indiana Jones. I feel sick, mate. I, I honestly And the Temple of Doom. Show me the sacred rock that the villagers want. Give it to me. Give it to me. Show me the treasures of the snake. I've been waiting my whole career for this. Finally, the snake is in my hands. Just... Yes. <laughs> yes, there is. There is that piece of crap. It's not, mate. I Look at it, sick. Andy. Look at it. Sick. Is that a real snake? Look. Don't touch it. Oh, let me touch the snake. No. Just let me... Don't... Oh, it feels silly. It doesn't feel silly. Don't touch it like that. Put it back. <laughs> Look mate. at you. Mate, this is... I might not be ever... I might not be ever welcome back into the family after this. Ladies and gentlemen... We have the snake. I've got adrenaline. I feel sick. Yeah. Now, do we need to speed off to get out of here? Because well, your mum's quite a slow walker. I just like the fact that you were the get- getaway navigator. <laughs> <laughs> like, you should have been in the car and just scratching. We got the snake. We got the snake. All right. Back it up. Watching mirrors. Watching mirrors. Nice and gentle. Nice and gentle. Make a left down here in 55 metres. Got the snake, everyone. So we have a snake. We've got the snake, everybody. We've it's got Hamish the and Andy snake. Driving we're taking home. the snake. Hamish and Andy. We cannot wait no longer. No, we can't. We have, uh, this whole journey has been an effort to track down Antiques Roadshow. Yeah. We have come to day 12. Great Britain and Ireland, we've scoured, and we've found them in Wales, everybody, the Antiques Roadshow. It's our final day. I'll be honest with you, Ando. Mm. When we're driving in, um, when we're seeing the, seeing the signs from Antiques Roadshow, yeah. we got a bit tingly. Yeah. I mean, let's not forget, mm. 
This is the biggest television show in the world yeah. ever made. People dream of being on Antiques Roadshow. Yep. People have box sets of Antique Roadshow, the movie, hmm. one, two, and three. Susan Boyle wanted to go on Antique Roadshow. She couldn't. Unfortunately, she went on Britain's Got Talent. She's unhappy with how that went for her. <laughs> <laughs> she would have still preferred Antiques Roadshow. That's the level of love there is for Antiques Roadshow in this country. You and, and I got there early, didn't we? We did. Um, not, not the first, though. No. Not by a long shot, no. because... It's basically... Antiques Roadshow is basically porcelain doll and old chair idol. Yes. If you've got a, a piece of porcelain in your house, mm. for some reason this show has made everyone in England think that that piece of porcelain mm. could be worth a million dollars. We pulled up in the car park and, yes, I had the antique wooden snake we'd bought from Australia. I'd stolen from my parents because the, the people had, well, sent a fair bit of hate mail. Take the snake, do it. rate the snake. This is... Don't hate the snake <laughs> yes. until we find out that, um, that it's a cheap snake well, and we not. can hate it. Well, we were looking forward to getting that valuing. I was looking forward, Ham, to you having to eat your words, and we were waiting in the car park ready to go. Well, well Ham... The moment of truth. I mean, you can just over this hedge is the Antiques Roadshow. It's like a rave for elderly people. Yeah. They're all there. They're all excited. They're all abuzz. I've got a security screening station. I mean, if you've got a mohawk or a fashionable haircut, you'll get kicked out straight away. Yeah. They don't want troublemakers. <laughs> no, Andy. Don't. We've done our hair yeah. nicely, and um, uh, very few people have made it in here under thirty. Mm. So mm. it's a select few yeah. that we've managed to penetrate the fortress that is Antiques Roadshow. Yep. You've got the snake. It's in the post pack. Mm. How are you feeling, mate? I mean, tens of thousands of kilometres we've flown. Yep. Um, many more thousands we've driven. Just, just keen to get it done. I mean, to be to be dubbed king of the world. Sure. Uh, definitely king of this uh, this van. It's when the it's highest honour you can get at <laughs> Antiques Roadshow, yeah. where they just send you and they go. It in itself is priceless, which makes you the king of the world. Yeah, yeah, looking forward to it. Wow, we went in. We walked in, Ham, at a slow pace as not to scare any of the old people. Um, it's I, such a funny queue, though, isn't it? Huge line of old people just holding different bits of what I would say junk, really. But That's the thing. It's, it's people know it's a long shot, yeah. what they've got. You know, it, it is of some value, but not to the point where they won't turn up. You know, there's that everyone has the same look in their eye. I this candlestick, this candlestick that I bought for a dollar fifty at mm. a car boot sale. Mm. I hope I put it in front of them, and they go, "This is the candlestick that King Henry the Eighth lost. He hid his diamonds in it. Yeah. It's the most culturally significant <laughs> candlestick in the world. Yeah. It's a billion dollar <laughs> candlestick. <laughs> I've got it. I've got it." <laughs> Mavis, bring the car around. I've got it. The candlestick. <laughs> My hunch was right. It was. It is essentially gambling for old people. And you're, what you're gambling with is time. Because you have to wait in the queue for five hours. And it's a precious the, commodity at that age. Well, that age, Ham, yeah. Time, five hours. Is <laughs> Another thing we noticed, too, and there's a lot of pictures at HamishandAndy.com for all the behind-the-scenes antique roadshow mm. uh, exclusives, yeah. if you will. Another thing we noticed was the good item arrogance. Mm. People that thought they were onto a winner the had an air look. of smugness around them. And Same they're the ones, look that and they you wouldn't see of someone with, in a business with a business class ticket over a plane, and they and wouldn't talk to other people in no. the queue. They're there. They've got their giant tapestry. They're staring straight ahead. Yeah, yeah it's a bit of fun for everyone that's just bought, you know, a tiny China cat along. Yeah. But this is business. <laughs> this is about to knock off Picasso as the greatest piece of artwork ever. Hey, we were in the line and we were next to a lovely couple, Mike and Wendy. We wanted to see what they thought of my antique wooden snake and we wanted to prove what they were going in with. Well, we're standing in the queue for Antiques Roadshow alongside Mike. Um, what have you bought, Mike? A writing case and a table. Um, my wife has got a couple of lamps and things like that. It's a little yeah. bit of a wait for us, but the anticipation is just immense, isn't it? Mike? Oh, yes, yes. Have you seen anyone carrying something that you've sort of seen and gone, yeah, that guy's sitting on a bit of a fortune there? Yeah, there was a guy who had a great big tapestry a few places in front of us. Mm. Uh, yeah, that looked as if it was going to be pretty valuable. Damn, yeah. The tapestry guy looks good. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I can see it. It's annoying because you get 
when you rock up and you're in the line, you see something, someone with something better than you, you feel a bit jealous, don't you? Oh, you do, you do, yeah. <laughs> you know, I wish I had one of those. <laughs> Any thoughts of a light switch up to just say hand in Wendy's necklace or something? Well, it could do, yeah, yeah. But I bought it, so I know this value. <laughs> <laughs> We've bought a valuable snake to be valued. What have you got today, ma'am? Uh, boots. You've got a pair of boots? Yes, China ones. China boots. Can we yes. see the boots? Well, they belong to this lady because I'm the only antique in my house. So. Oh, yes. <laughs> if, if we can see the booties, we'll show you the snake. Fair trade? Alright, okay. They're extraordinary, aren't they? I think they're too small for you. So. These would have been very uncomfortable. I would have thought, thought yes, so. Yes, I would have. This is the snake. Oh, charming. Yeah. Oh, I've seen those. In, I've seen those in in Australia, haven't you, Pam? Yes. Well, you wouldn't have seen they're, one quite like this. They're very common. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that old lady didn't know what she was talking about. I can so say that she knew exactly what I, she was talking I, I, about. We come a long way, this snake, didn't it, mate? It From had. World War One. It used to live around here, didn't it? It did. When we went and to Australia, thought it had retired. No, back to the front line. And it was time for Hillary to uh, to pass the judgment. Uh, thank you for seeing us, Hillary. Sorry, we are not worthy. You, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I, but you can try. I have bought all the way from Australia uh, an antique wooden snake. Okay. Which, um, now, is this the rainbow serpent from Arnhem Land? No, he or? wishes. That would be quite valuable, okay. although we would get in trouble for bringing that. This uh, okay. was from my great-grandma to my grandma to my mum to now me. Well, I actually Probably stole it. Probably as a joke. So start to bring it here. I don't know what to believe, actually. Well, it's true. It's all true. Is it? Okay. Um, and um, and I'm not sure where it where it came from before then. Did you get an export license from Australia for an, an article of cultural and historic interest? I'm not sure. If <laughs> of course we did. That's fine. <laughs> Just checking. Um, um, in the port. No. It's in the post. <laughs> Hilary, before we open this yes. up, um, what's the highest value you've ever put on a snake? I mean, of any type, of any antiquity. Of any snake, of any antiquity. I mean, a, a wooden one, not a, not a real one. Um, no, there are there are some very good snakes made in Turkey at the end or in the middle of the First World War, which are beaded. Oh, beaded. Mm. Beaded. For a second, I mean, Andy's family carries on about this snake like it won the First World War. You know, okay. Like it, they really <laughs> see this as a very heroic snake. Well, I'm... I'm, I'm... Get the damn thing out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a kid on prom night. Get the snake out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. I've never seen one you, you... quite as fantastic as this. <laughs> hey, just be gentle. <laughs> Why is everyone laughing? <laughs> everyone is laughing at the snake. And uh, I noticed, Hillary, you're holding it a lot yeah. sort of rougher than Andy's been holding okay. it. Okay. What's your thoughts? Uh, my thoughts are that it is... Well, let's describe it. It's a an articulated, painted wooden snake. Mm -hmm. it, From the rubbish era. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, it's very sweet. It's got little little uh, nails as eyes. Cheap. No, it's, it's, I think this is absolutely charming. It's I charming, really do. And um, what I love in Australia, having just come back from there, is that you're very imaginative about the names of your snakes. You know, if it's brown, it's called a brown snake. Yes, yes. And if it's green, it's called a green snake. Yes, it's so if it's crap, it's called a crap and this snake. And this is exactly what I was going to come to. What that, is it? That this is a crap wooden snake. <laughs> <laughs> and what I sincerely hope <laughs> That's good. sorry, Hillary. What I sincerely oh, we're, we're devastated, we're devastated. No, okay, let's let's talk well, sensibly. Uh, Date wise, I would say it's probably thirties. And it's a I mean it's an almost a piece of folk art, not quite. Uh, but it would have been relatively inexpensive when it was made. Yeah, and um, it's dropped in value since then. And it has not gone up in value, let's put it that way. What uh, would we put what what dollar amount or penny amount? Dollar Dollar is at what, this. what, 174 at the moment? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to put it in pounds. You can do okay. the math. Sure. Um, I would say that that is a 25-pound snake. Okay. <laughs> and I think the airmail cost of sending it home is about 28 pounds. <laughs> it's almost it's cheaper a, to leave it here. Oh, shame, shame. Thank but you. Uh, you see, uh, I'll, I, I'll go for a second opinion. <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't think you'll find one much better than Hillary's, mate. All right, well, I wish you luck. <laughs> <but> I... <laughs> 
I don't think it's going to do you um, a whole lot of good, really. Is, how long should we wait until? How long would we have to wait until this is worth a lot of money? So it'll, it'll never be worth a lot of money. But what if a, a million years? It's the only piece of wood left in the solar system. I tell you what. In a million years' time, bring it back. And I'll, I'll tell you how much it's worth. Okay. Look forward to telepathically okay. communicating with you then. Thanks, Hillary. Have fun, Thank you, Hillary. You okay. Don't, don't, don't. Where's the bin? <laughs> I was um, I was disappointed, Ham. Sure, and maybe sure. I talked it up a little too much. I don't think so. <laughs> it uh, was uh, from where I sat, Andy. But can I just when, say, I, when she said it was uh, twenty five pounds, I went. I've I've made a huge I made a huge mistake. I made a huge you, mistake. Did you? That's what I thought. It was a giant mistake. <laughs> did you think it was like a scratchy, where you heard the twenty five and you're waiting for the thousand? And then at one point she also said, now there's some very expensive ones of these from World War One in from Turkey. Mate, and that's, to be honest, not being funny, that's when your parents had said mm. it was from mm. World War One, And, of course, a lot of World War One was fought in Turkey. Mm. And for a second, I felt the buzz of yeah. Roadshow. Yeah. I'll be yeah, honest so with you. Well. I went... Hang on a second. <laughs> on a what if this snake is the king of Turkey, yeah. as suspected, yeah. and it's worth a hundred grand? We it wasn't. Would, it was a piece of junk. We wouldn't be doing the show. We wouldn't be doing the <laughs> show. <laughs> you just need to hear a recorded message. You'd say, Grumpy I, Dave, suck on me. <laughs> you dear Grumpy Dave, we are currently in Barbados, <laughs> uh, living it up off snake funds. <laughs> hey, um, you did manage to capture my disappointment uh, straight after we I was shattered as well, mate. It was devastating. Well, and are we sitting here on a bench with thousands of uh, senior citizens shuffle past us with items that you'd have to say more valuable than the snake? Twenty-five pounds. How's that feel? Like a cold bucket of water, I would have thought. Feels low. Yeah, feels very low. It's in the pricing. I don't. It stings like a snake bite from a cheap snake, doesn't it? It's cheaper than a green snake. I just twenty-five. Cheaper pounds. than a door snake. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's lunch for two. <laughs> it, just, it just worries me, but... but it's the, the it's most... cheaper than taking your fat kids to see the footy. <laughs> I just didn't know that was an antique. <laughs> it's, two, it's, two, it's two family dinner boxes, <laughs> which I'd much rather prefer. Yeah, look, it's a, it's a sad it's day a for, snake. for the league. Man. Um... What can I say? Uh, Dad, uh, commiserations. <laughs> um, if Noel Blake comes around and heckles you, yeah. tell him to bugger off. Yeah, huge win for the Blakes. <laughs> Dad, if you're listening, uh, we're rich but, by default. But, but I would maintain that there is nothing in the Blake family more valuable than this 25 pounds. Oh, I think we've got a dead old cat somewhere. <laughs> I've never liked the show. <laughs> oh, hey. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Look, Don't shoot the messenger, mate. Shoot your dad. Once in the foot for lying. 